Okay, hey, in this video, what I want to cover is how to take, you know, a LiveOx, you know, uh, LiDAR data, and how do we improve it to get into the realm of survey quality? There's a lot of different units on the market today, and I just covered what I thought was the, um, the best attributes on your LiDAR workflow. But today, now I want to go into different conditionings or different elements of refinement that you can do to take an automotive sensor like the LiveOx uh, system and bring it into something that you can actually do survey with. So a lot of guys are out there showing pretty point clouds and saying, hey, this is fantastic. And I'm excited too. And I started there eight years ago. But today, what I want to show is the elements of what happens underneath that will make surveyors excited and what you need to consider when you're looking at the market today. And so in this one, we're going to go through two different data sets. Okay, one data set is by uh, PNG Engineering up in Alaska. Uh, so we're going to look at some tundra, some bare earth, and maybe some lower scrub brush. Um, and bare earth is important when we start to look at precision quality in our lighter data. The other one that we're going to look at here is going to be something that I flew in uh, Colorado last year. So this is also LiveOx data. We flew on a M600 versus the uh, M300. And uh, I normally don't fly guys anymore. Um, I've been doing this for 20 years as far as the flight portion goes. And so I don't need to actually get out and fly drones anymore. But I do when there's a lot of risk or there's a lot of um, very technical skill that needs to be happened in the planning process. And so in this particular case, we were flying very close to, uh, to interstate uh, around Denver. And so we really needed this to go right. And so that's why I was brought in on this. Um, so we will show you this. Now, the other reason why I want to show you on this data set is there's, there's a lot of bare earth here. And that's important because when you're doing an assessment of lighter quality, uh, you have two vertical accuracy standards according to ARSPS. Okay, your first accuracy standard is, you know, your general uh, accuracy standards. And so what that means for you all, take a note, is that your... Um, your standard deviation is going to match your root mean square error. <laughs> what the heck is that, right? So what that means is that if you're doing control and you're going to assess the vertical accuracy of your set, that across the millions of points that you're going to capture, your standard deviation, which is how much it's going to vary from truth, is going to be exactly the same as a mean or a root mean square error, um, which is in a, uh, a biased average of the, um, of the data sets. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense in this, but when we get into special accuracy, which is more when we're dealing with vegetation, now there's variance on top of that. So we're not measuring just the ground. We have other elements that are coming in that are going to make that, that mean different from the standard deviation. That is special accuracy. That's when we deal with vegetation, and that's how we have to treat our data a little bit different in our annotation. So when we look at precision, we really want to be looking at bare earth as that mean to go, okay, this is the, you know, how thick or, or how fuzzy that cloud is going to be. And that means that the laser is either going to shoot within a certain level of tolerance or not. Um, so in this particular case, a live ox sensor is good up to about two and a half uh, centimeters of accuracy. So that's just about a tenth, tenth of a foot of precision is what we're talking about. Now, why is that important? All right, so as, before we dive into the data, um, we're dealing with a couple things when you deal with LiDAR. Okay, the precision basically is the integrity of your point cloud. So how tight everything is, what the terrain's gonna look like. Um, then on top of that, you're gonna have bias error and GPS error. Now, the nice thing is if your precision's good, we can start to use control to bring your, your global accuracy into, into that realm of, of a tenth of a foot, okay? The, the tighter your control is, the better or the, the ability to pull that data uh, or snap it to grid is, is what you want to do. So that's why this is important, okay? And so with all the LiDAR sensor or LiveOx sensors out there today, and we're going to start with this because um, this is the one that's being adopted the most, um, and so you guys really should understand this. 
And I didn't want to show you an expensive sensor that, that has a lot of precision. I want to show you an affordable sensor that has a lot of precision or could have a lot of precision. So that's what we're going to dive in here today. All right. Now, as we get into this, you know, I'm going to go into about four different elements or four different corrections um, that you should look at. Now, it may not be that the sensor that you have or the sensor you're considering is going to have this in their workflow. Uh, and you're going to have to go to other software to do this. But now you're going to know why you're going to need this. So the first thing you're going to want to look at is a boresight. Okay, so plain boresight really quickly in the terms of Green Valley. Um, you know, so there's subtle changes that happen on your airframe, whether uh, you knock your uh, you knock your sensor. Um, you know, there's the way that GPS is actually set it. Uh, maybe your antennas are loose. So there's lots of little things that can affect your boresight. And so what Green Valley has done in this particular case, and other manufacturers do as well, is they're going to do analysis from strip to strip of your of your data set, and they're going to try to find common attributes or uh, com things in common, and they were going to look at those in terms of either X, Y, or what we call translational. Uh, and when you're doing a bore site, you're going to go through a series of steps of translational, and then you're going to do rotational corrections. So that's what we're still doing that process, but we're looking at the point cloud specifically, strip to strip, to kind of line that up. And you know, when we're calibrating a sensor, that's what we do anyways. Um, so we're gonna look at that, and then we're gonna see how, how much better we can actually refine it from strip to strip. And that's what I'm talking about when we talk about precision. So when we look at this, um, I've already run one of these real quickly, so I'll pull this up here. And we'll look at the log view for this first. And you can see here, um, you know, that we started off, we can see the mins and the, and the maxes of this. So the worst it was is we had a point somewhere out here that was about 18 centimeters off. And you guys are going, oh my God. Yeah, guess what? You're going to have some of that in there. But if it's not over your control point, you're not going to know unless you run reports like this. All right, and the other ones are within, God, point, I mean, below millimeters, okay? So practically zero, all right? And so and the, that root mean square error, in this particular case, talking about all the points for precision is roughly about eight centimeters or plus or minus four centimeters, which is well within the manufacturer's reported capability, all right? Now when you get in and we've run it, and we've done this in um, roll, pitch, and yaw, so we're doing polar, um, what we're looking at here is we've got it down roughly about a centimeter. And so maybe I like that, and I'm gonna show you a different chart to make this look a little bit better. So you got the same numbers, but what we've seen here is we've just pulled our precision in just a little bit. So here we're up around 18, and now we're down around 17 on here. So we're sitting with our root mean square error somewhere around eight. Okay, so that's a good start when we're looking at our overall uh, precision. Now, does that mean that we're 14 centimeters off? No, that means that across all of those, that's the whole population and where we think it is in relation to each other. So these guys are like, oh, it's not accurate. No, that's not true. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the integrity of our data. Okay, how? How much of a reality capture are we really doing here? Okay, so, you know, right here, you can already see that we've actually added, you know, across our whole population, a centimeter of, of accuracy, which is huge, all right? That means we can do a little bit better, all right? And uh, so what I'll do here is I'll apply that and move on. Yep, we'll change our data because it's good. Now, I could do this also in XY and see if that gets better and, um, you know, there's some techniques I cover in our, our data processing courses um, for the individual different workflows. And if you want to jump into one of those, uh, we go in much more detail on how to do this. Um, but now while that's cooking, we're going to take a look at this one. Okay, so with this one, you can see that I just pulled up the report. Um, you know, you can see we're practically zero on the min before alignment, and we're roughly about eight centimeters. Um, you know, of max error. So this is a lot tighter of uh, a set and probably because I'm doing shorter run lines and, and some other things that 
you know, I didn't fly the other one. <laughs> so at any rate, um, so we have a starting root mean square error of about four centimeters. All right. And then after we do an application, so we got in and, and we basically didn't make hardly any change at all. So that means that um, this is already a really tight strip to strip set and we're really dialed in. And so you can see even in our charts that we're really plus or minus four centimeters, you know, as, or the spread of that is such. So, um, you know, pretty good integrity. And you can see when you look at that population that um, it's pretty, it's, I wouldn't say it's Gaussian, but it, it is pretty tight on here where some of the other one, the other one we did was really kind of more spread out. And, you know, in our lighter planning course, we kind of talk about how to refine that and how the flight would actually affect, you know, how that, that population would look. So if you're really into getting the most precision, this is the kind of stuff you need to be looking at here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to cover is trajectory adjustments. And so what is trajectory adjustment? Um, so in previous videos, like I said, and I think we said this in other places in this video, um, your LiDAR is, is really based off of GPS, inertial, uh, uh, inertial data. You know, you combine those with a base station and that gives you your, your trajectory or where your rover position is. And then we use lever arms to sync that to your lighter sensor and get a direct sense of the ground using light. Um, so one of the bigger errors that you can have is where that rover location is. And so in trajectory adjustment, uh, what we're going to do is look at all the acceleration uh, positional reportings, you know, several times a second. And we're going to smooth that off, you know, and we're going to look at those in, in this particular case, five second spleens in three dimensional space. <laughs> Whoa, right? Um, but I'm not going to go through all that, you know, and what I really want to do is kind of dive in here and just show you the reports and why this is important. So I'll come in and I've already have the trajectory adjustment uh, open. So let's go ahead and pull open that report. And again, now we see this report, and guys, again, we're talking about precision, uh, not, not overall global accuracy. So when you look at this, we're looking at a minimum of zero error, that's great, and a maximum of 42 centimeters. Wow! Um, but when, and then we look at a root mean square of about eight centimeters. Okay, so when you look at this chart down below on here, you can see that you know, you have 42 all the way here, the end tail, but this is like the half of a bell curve, okay? And so a mean is, is really like the sum of the averages um, of, of where the highest amount of population actually resolve, resides. So how much error is really here? And so that's roughly at about eight centimeters. So that's right about here. Okay, now, after we do a trajectory adjustment, which means we're, we're correcting that, you can look at what we're looking at here is like the low end is zero and the high end is a little over four centimeters okay plus or minus two but you can see now this population looks vastly different we pulled that population all the way in so like we have 400 or 40,000 points with almost virtually no error or within uh within technically a centimeter wow that's good Right, so we know that our mean here, our root mean square error for the precision is at roughly two centimeters. All right, so that was one data set. So now let's go take a look at our other data set here. So we have our Colorado set, and I'll go ahead and hit report on this one. And so here, um, again, fluid differently, you know, and, and that makes a big difference. Um, but right now we're starting off with uh, up to 15 centimeters of error, and you can see at that tail. So we still have this um, this bell curve here, uh, but we're looking at about three centimeters of root mean square error. So right about here. Okay. Now afterwards, oh, this is great. I love this. So we're going from zero to three. Okay. But you can see we've because we've actually corrected the trajectory, how much we've actually pulled this in. So we're looking at a root mean square of, of really a centimeter and a half. Okay, um, total of three centimeters of error, but when you look at that from a population standpoint, 
you know, uh, less than two centimeters of, of, of error here, um, at least the way we report it. So amazing, amazing what we can do here, just correcting the trajectory. So, you know, again, this is something you really need to think about when you're looking at a, at a point cloud going, is this good or not? It's not the image. It's the integrity of the data that we need to be talking about here. All right, so now the next thing is I'm going to stay on this data set, and we're going to talk about uh, strip matching, okay, or, or the way the overlap is. And so, uh, oops, forgot to turn that off. So in a, in a previous, um, we talked about, you know, how depending on the sensor, you may get some angular error, and that may cause some curvature. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this one, uh, and we're going to look at it in segment view. Okay, and so let's see if this pops up. Yeah, I'm really working this thing hard. Okay, there we go. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to look at this with a profile tool. And I'm going to use this roadside as, um, as looks, because we, we want a hard surface to really take a look at this. All right, and I'm going to make this small. Let's look at a five, seven year spread, if it lets me. Okay, so now that we got our profile up, uh, and we're looking at segment view, so you can see we've got a blue streak, yellow streak, red streak. You get the idea. So what we're going to do is we're looking at literally five centimeters. I mean, really tight and refined. And what I'm going to do is really zoom in on this. Move this up in. And so what we're looking for, and we're looking right about here at this point in time. And see how we've got this data population below and then we've got the main stretch. And as we go through, you can see it's not quite fully lined up. And as we get farther and farther into center mass, it, you know, our populations of red and yellow in this particular case are, are starting to tighten up. And so that is a good surface. Uh, and so that's what we want. So what we want to do in here is we want to, to make sure that we have a consistent surface all the way through without without outliers and that creates a better surface or a better data set for us. So I'm going to go into now um, control view and I'm going to show you by just running this. And so I ran this a little earlier here and you can see now, let me close that, that um, by running this, you know, this outlier that's right here and this outlier right here, um, how this is, you know, you've got all these little spots in here. And then if I come in and let's go to classify again and take this out, you know, so this sometimes is called uh, demonstration, but uh, now I've got a much better line here of points on here. And so that means I'm going to have a better surface and I'm going to have less variability. Now, just so there's no misunderstanding, I'm going to go to, and you can see I did this right on the road's surface. So I've got a nice 80% reflectance material. Um, there's no error on here as far as like it's, it's a surface. I don't have vegetation or anything else that could interfere. And I've got this nice laying out pattern. Um, and so you can see what a big difference this is actually going to make. Okay, now we're going to go and look at our, uh, our other model here. Uh, okay, so the nice thing is this is Tundra, um, but we're not going to have a nice roadside. But you'll get the gist now to kind of give you another area to kind of look at. So I'll go ahead and go back into my color segmentation strategy so you can see my different lines here. And then I'm going to go into my profile tool again. Um, and we're going to just go ahead and pick a swath anywhere at this particular point. And I've got the buffer on, so that's nice. And now you can see I'm going to zoom in here now. And you see I've got good returns in here. I've got good setup in here. And it doesn't look like much until we really start to get in. And you start to see now where this, this layer it is not quite in with the rest of them. And the same thing with the green. Looks like we didn't get a good return here. So now I'll go ahead and turn my classified view on. Let's go ahead and take a look at both of these. Hit OK. And again, you can see these areas here that, that are outlined. 
And again, coming in here, turn that off. All right. So automatically, you can see that just by doing this, getting rid of those overlapped points, um, that we have a much better surface on here. And that means we're going to have a much more accurate uh, piece. Because when you start to, let me come back here again, add these extra pieces, these become outliers data set. And so that's going to interfere with your contours, your surface. And so if you're doing dirt work or you're trying to get really refined on what you're doing, this makes a huge difference. Now, if you're going to the brush um, and you want what for contours, do what you want. But if you really want to get down to that six inch contour piece at an affordable price, this is how we do that. All right. So now that we got that, we're going to move on to the next thing. Okay, so one of the other things can make a really bad day um, is actually having noise. Now, you know, you can in post-process filter that out or cut it out whether you're using Global Mapper or Terra Solids or what have you. Um, you know, but again, this could really throw off your surface. It could, it could create a lot of work for you. So I'm using a height model and I'm going to blow these points up on here. And we're going to increase in size just so we can see that, yeah, there's there's still a thin layer of, of set here. So let's go ahead and denoise this um, and look at what that's going to do. Um, now, mind you guys, when you're doing classification schemes and if you're doing ARSPS standards and that kind of stuff, if you're doing that kind of certification, uh, understand that it with this noise up here, high noise, which is up and away from it, low noise is, is attributes or artifacts that are close to your surface. Um, this can affect the accuracy greatly on here. So uh, what we want to do is see if we can automate this and, and get rid of as much of this as possible. And, and as a true story, we had processed some data for um, Kansas State for, for a course, and uh, we, had one, um, we had one point that came in about 2,000 meters below the surface. We had a hard time finding it. Totally threw off our accuracy. And made this huge when we did a surface it made this huge divot um, in the surface and it took a while for us to find it and and correct that um, so it might seem like it's extreme for some of you folks um, but it, it actually affected the data product and how water flowed over the surface and a whole bunch of things so if you don't get it cleaned up you're going to create a lot more work for you later on all right so let's go take a look at this okay so we run the um, point or the remove uh, noise tool. So we'll put this on a profile. And what we've done is, you know, whenever you make a data modification, you don't want to remove your data. So we have two data sets actually on top of each other. So let's go ahead and get rid of the original just so we can see what was left here. And then we'll go ahead and bring that into height model really quickly and scale up our points. Yeah, look at that. And you can see now that's totally clean. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, looks like we got one little point right there. So again, overall looking really, really good. Okay. So again, we're going to look at this data set, which is, um, again, obviously a lot more uh, active or a lot more noise on this. So we can see this. So let's go ahead and run this one as well. Um, and you can see this is a pretty extreme case um, on this as I, let's see if I can spin it here. There we go, come on, give me a side view. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and see what this looks like. Okay, and so now let's take a look at this data set. As we pull in, okay, we have our noise, you saw that. Okay, and let's go ahead and turn off our old one. And there you go. So still have a little bit, but it's so far out, we can actually fix that. Um, this is going to be easy to clip. Um, and you can, But you can see it's been greatly improved here. Um, and yeah, I probably could do some more. Let's go ahead and do that. And I may actually run another, uh, you know, maybe another round to see if I can improve it here. Um, so yeah, I've got maybe a, a few artifacts right here, but overall, uh, and a couple down here that we can get rid of. But overall, not so bad. So definitely made a huge improvement. Uh, that was definitely a challenging case. 
but you can see how important that is uh, to improve here when you happen to see those kind of things. So, okay, so I hope this has actually helped you along the way to kind of see what's actually possible and how to look at, at LiDAR data just a little bit differently. Um, you know, do you need to go through all this extremes? If, if you're not really, if you're just going for a, a foot contour, two foot contour, anything will do. But if you really need to get precise and you really want to, to get the most out of these sensors, um, especially the ones that are automotive and you want to get into survey grade, well, these kind of tools are what's going to make that happen. Now, again, it, this is Green Valley, but it could be, you know, some of the other folks out there that, that have this. Um, you know, you really have to be careful with some of the new startups out there because they don't understand this and they want to sell you with just showing you a point cloud and how cool it is where this actually is going to make a huge difference um, on that. So uh, if you like this, go ahead and share and hit subscribe. Uh, it means a lot for the algorithm so that, you know, more people get to actually see this. Um, and we also put a lot of work into this. So, um, you know, we really want this to go out and help as many people as we can. Um, and if you like it or tell me what you like about this, put a comment in below. Um, you know, if I get enough comments on a certain topic, I actually will make that video. Um, it takes a lot of work to do these. So I want to make sure that uh, whatever I make serves the most people possible. So with that, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, get mapping. Talk to you soon.